Have you looked at a fashion magazine and saw a model in there with a beautiful lighting scenario on her, a nice halo shadow around her, in other words, that high fashion lighting look? That's done with a ring light. A ring light is a strobe that wraps all the way around your lens to give you that exact look. Professional ring flashes are great tools. They have a lot of power and they're great to use. The downside is that sometimes they're heavy, they're tethered by a cable to a power pack in a lot of cases, so they can be kind of tough to travel with. They won't exactly fit into your bag. But now you can get that same ring flash look with this little guy. This is the Ray Flash from Expo Imaging. It's a light modifier that fits on a tool you probably already have in your bag, your shoe mount flash. It locks onto the front and using the fiber in this circle takes the light and transfers it into the same configuration that you would get on the big professional ring lights. In addition to that, the big professional ring lights actually have a flash tube, so traveling with them can be a little bit tricky because those flash tubes can be delicate. There's no tube in this to break. It's very durable, it's very lightweight, and it'll fit right into your bag. As I said, with the ray flash or a ring light in general, what you're doing is surrounding your lens with light, so it's a very even cast. That's unlike the results that you'll get with off-camera lighting such as this mono light or a speed light that is mounted off-camera. What happens is you cast a light in from one direction and you can get some shadows off to the other side from where you're shooting the light, or you would have to compensate for that with ambient light that's in the room by mixing that light correctly or with a reflector or a secondary light. So the advantage to having a ray flash is that you can take your speed light on camera, mount it, and as you cast the light onto your subject, it is hitting at all sides and it's lighting with an even shadow and a halo-like effect to get that high fashion look. Not only is it lightweight and portable, but it's very easy to use. All you need to do is take your speed light mounted to your camera, pop the ray flash on, use the locking mechanism, and you're ready to go. Another advantage to the ray flash is the diameter and the opening on the inside of the ring. There are commercially available flashes in a, in a ring configuration that can be used as shoe mounts. The problem with them is that the diameter is so small you can only use small lenses. This will accommodate the larger and professional lenses. When using the ray flash, you'll find that the TTL works just like normal. It's through the lens metering, so even though the ray flash is mounted to the front of your speed light, it doesn't affect the way that your TTL works. The same goes for manual exposure. You can pull out the meter, meter for your exposure just like you would any other time using a speed light. Another helpful tip to keep in mind is that over time, especially if you use your speed lights as much as I do out on location, you can begin to get a little bit of play in the head for the vertical movement because of the swivel that's here. One way to compensate for that has been included in the package with the ray flash. There's a set of three little rubber wedges included. You can take one of these wedges, cut it in half lengthways. You take the larger part of it and you insert it up into that slot underneath the head movement underneath the swivel of the head and then install your ray flash and by doing that you eliminate any play that you might have had on an older and more used speed light. The first thing I want to show you is probably one of the coolest things about this ray flash and it's actually one of the things that got me attached to it in the first place. You know when you step out and you're going to take a shot and you just put your speed light on, you want to shoot portrait or vertically oriented. What's going to happen if I take a shot of our beautiful model here with just this light? Let's take a look. We're probably going to get some very harsh skin tones and a very nasty shadow directly behind her. Exactly what we got. But you know what? If I pop this ray flash on, it no longer matters whether I'm vertically or horizontally oriented. The camera no longer cares. So I pop it on, as easy as that, and I take another shot and look at the difference that we see here. This turns a simple shot with a white background, as you can see, into a dramatic, high fashion look with that halo around her. 
Now, the beautiful thing about array flash, using it with ETTL like I just did, is that it doesn't matter how far away I am. I can stand way back where I can move in. And because of the dynamic of the light, the fall off actually adjusts with me as I move in on my subject. It's a nice wraparound look. So without changing a single thing, I can take a picture of our beautiful model's eye up close. Watch this. I'm going to get right in as tight as the minimum focus distance will let me. And bang. Look at that eye shot. Is that not beautiful? This is why I like the ray flash. It doesn't matter where I am, where I move to. When I'm in ETTL mode with my speed light, I get the shot that I want. Now, we've seen that wraparound feature of the shadow halo that we talked about. It's a beautiful effect, but sometimes you don't want it to be quite as prevalent. And in order to do that, you simply move your model away from the background. As long as there's not that wall or that backdrop directly behind them, the further you bring them out from it, it actually expands and softens that shadow. Let's take a look at the results of doing that. And you step out one step. See the difference in that shadow? It's an amazing difference by a simple movement. Now when you're at an event or a wedding, uh, any, any location that you choose to shoot at, you're not going to have a, a background directly behind your subjects more than likely, so you don't worry about it at all. You get that wraparound effect and no halo, no shadow, but you still get the fashion light. In those cases where you do have the background right behind you and you want to go high key or you want to eliminate the shadow, even with the background there, you simply add a backlight. Backlight you're going to use in the studio anyway. I'm sure many of you are very experienced at doing that. Just mix them in. In this case, what I've done is I've put a small uh, flash head on either side of the backdrop just to bleed a little bit of light in there. And I got it about half of the power that I'm giving with my primary. Look at the results that we get out of this. Now let's add a little bit of spice. Bring the fan over. Oh my God, yes. Talk about fun and easy, great shots, very little work, fully automated with TTL or in manual, and you got it made. The Ray Flash just makes it easy. If you haven't got one of these already, it's probably time you do. Go to expoimaging.net, check out the product details on the Ray Flash and a bunch of other things that will probably help you with your photography. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something, but I got to go because Nikki's agreed to take some pictures of me. It's time for me to actually work. See ya.